Hi, everyone. Let's uh, start to, to show the extended ASTRAP uh, microservice experience in the banking industry. We are David Garcia and Rubén Aguilera. We are software engineer at, at Authentia. Authentia is a technology consultancy that helps you in several, several areas, like software development support, technical audits, agile facilitation, training, custom software development, and a new area of the product design and user experience. This is the content of the presentation. First, uh, a bit of context, uh, then decision log, and the future of the work. Let's uh, start uh, to tell the context. Uh, <clears throat> Not, not, lo not long ago, uh, the, the company's banking forced us to go into physical office to operate with them. They had monolithic architectures, and uh, because the number of requests were under control and they were happy. <laughs> but change around uh, society, economic, and technology claims for uh, internet banking. Also, all of you and me has a mobile device in the pocket, and all of you and me wants to operate with the, with the bank. This fact increased the number of requests and product tool, and the monolithic architectures collapse. The, this is the, this is the, the fact of the uh, digital transformation are coming. According to Martin Fowler, the solution of this is a split the monolith. And now, uh, David explained you how easy it is in a real banking experience with the new challenge of the open banking and the new regulations. So, how to be successful in that environment? Um, well. It was clear that business had to take advantage of the opportunity window by uh, producing the maximum value in the minimum time. And they also had to be centered on customer needs and hide all business processes. And in order to achieve all that, uh, quality uh, should be a core principle. And how to cope with those challenges, that is providing maximum value to customers in the minimum time and meeting the expected quality? Well, there were two goals. First of all is uh, fostering a culture of excellence where individuals can pursue mastery. And then uh, split the system, teams and processes in independent and autonomous parts. And that's the magic word, autonomy. Um, everything, every decision taken uh, must support and improve uh, autonomy. What aspects of autonomy have we cared about? Well, first of all, we must uh, uh, gather people around uh, in teams that are uh, responsible for different aspects of the system. In independent from each other. Then uh, all the products must be uh, split into in independent uh, functions or business capabilities. Then we must be able to use uh, the right tool for the right job. And it must be possible to package, version, and deploy uh, independent and small components uh, without affecting the whole system. And last, uh, regarding operations, uh, we should be able to manage each runtime component isolated uh, from the other components, for example, handling failure or uh, managing scalability. <clears throat> These are the four pillars of the uh, Autonom autonomous uh, process that uh, we have built. Uh, first of, of the pillars is uh, it, the use of iterative methodologies. 
The second one is DevOps, uh, to make sure the whole IT team work together uh, to achieve the ultimate goal of uh, delivering uh, the maximum value in the shortest time. Then uh, the third one is using microservices as a best fit for uh, autonomy. And then the last one is uh, giving the development teams the tools they need to have the confidence in meeting the expected requirements without needing external quality assurance teams. In the following slides, uh, we are going to walk through uh, the decisions uh, regarding architecture and organization uh, that we have taken during this project. Okay, first one is agility. And with regard to this, uh, even we have been using standard methodologies. Um, not everything was happiness uh, because, for example, some agile coaches uh, forgot their role as team assistants and instead behaved as time suckers. Uh, there were also some problems with the scrum ceremonies that took too much time. And, and then uh, the upper layers of the organization sometimes tried to, tried to push and force uh, policies that were against the, one of the core uh, um, extreme programming uh, values, which is uh, team self-organization. We fought those. <laughs> okay, regarding DevOps, uh, it was clear that uh, we had to use containers everywhere from our own packages that were deployed as containers and also uh, using containers, for example, for ex uh, external systems during integration testing. Um, we found out that during the project that uh, people tend to focus on their own problems and concerns and forget uh, about everything else. Uh, as that would lead to new silos, um, we had to um, make an additional work, extra work, to promote a strong communication, collaboration, and participation of everybody in all aspects of the delivery process. This is uh, something very important. Okay, a, a tough decision is how to organize people um, to work in, in parallel. And so we decided to follow the Spotify model. And you have mainly two types of development teams. One is squads, which are responsible for one vertical end-to-end -end product feature. Their work is organized uh, through Scrum. And then, on the other hand, you have chapters, uh, which are groups of people that share uh, or are concerned about a, a particular layer or technology. For example, uh, iOS, Android, or Angular, for example and architecture, there is also an architecture chapter. Their work is organized through Kanban boards. Um, each person belongs to one squad and zero or more chapters, and they have to balance their available, their, their available work time um, between the squad and the chapters. Last, uh, we have uh, psychological safety as a very powerful mechanism that has proved very, very important to improve uh, team productivity. <coughs> um, an issue that has happened um, to us, and, and most probably you know very well, is the how, to, how we have struggled to achieve an even, level of, uh, an even level of quality between developers, because there is a strong disparity between, between experience and knowledge. Um, the way we have been able to uh, fix that problem is by an, an extensive use of, of pair programming. And another thing that was very welcomed by developers were code reviews and light refactoring sessions where they could see um, um, best practices and techniques uh, applied. And all this has given us excellent results. Okay, one. Uh, as being uh, the core uh, principle, being autonomy, we had to make sure that uh, teams could work in parallel without blocks. 
So we decided to go with an API first strategy. And the way it works is by first uh, writing an API blueprint specification, and from there, uh, get three products. Uh, one is the contract testing, another one is a mock server for consumers, and then human documentation. And then the service is implemented <coughs> afterwards. Developers complained this was cumbersome because of the tooling, mostly. Many tools and some of them complex to use with particular corner cases. And so now we are experimenting with Cucumber and OpenAPI. Okay. Uh, quality is one of the core business principles, but that's an abstract concept. And we had to translate that into uh, something that is more practical and, and concrete. So uh, we use those well-known golden rules uh, that uh, must be uh, internalized and, and spread everywhere. We also promote uh, best practices like solid patterns, TDD, and refactoring. And SonarCube, anyway, is our quality assurance tool to make sure uh, everyone uh, works that way. Regarding our testing strategy, we were following the classic testing pyramid, uh, but we saw some overlaps and gaps, and we are trying to fix them by uh, implementing uh, ATDD with Cucumber. Okay, a tough decision could have been the branching policy, but we decided to avoid the discussion just by uh, enforcing a no branches policy. That is a master-based development. Um, why, you might be wondering. Well, if you think of the continuous integration process as a feedback loop, uh, then, uh, with branches, you get a slow feedback because you will only notice problems when you merge branches. Without branches, uh, integration problems are revealed very quickly as soon as you try to push code to the Git repository, and therefore you have a much faster feedback. How do we deal with unfinished functionality? Uh, we, well, we deactivate the unfinished code paths with feature toggles. <coughs> Now moving to serious stuff, or microservices architecture. Um, why did we go straight with microservices instead of starting with a monolith, uh, following wise advice like that of Martin Fowler, for example? Well, we did that for three reasons, mainly. Uh, the first one is that the banking domain isn't a dark place where nobody has ever been before. Um, we have business experts that know and understand the domain. Then the second reason is that uh, our top priority is autonomy. And then uh, luckily we have uh, experienced developers that already know the perils of the microservices architectures. So far, so good. And we have been, uh, even been able to throw away unneeded microservices easily and without requ requiring brain surgery. This diagram shows our uh, microservices architecture. We have uh, classified our microservices uh, in three types, depending on their role. Uh, first of all, we have vertical apps, which uh, are the ones receiving uh, the REST client request. And they implement the business logic and delegate to uh, adapter microservices, which are the ones responsible for managing the different domains. Uh, for example, we have accounts, transactions, cards, customers, and so on. Then we have connector microservices, uh, which just uh, are responsible for the integration between the core banking system and other third parties. All this happens synchronously. Um, on the other hand, um, state changes are propagated asynchronously as uh, Kafka events, which are then consumed by any microservices uh, that require to have an up-to-date view of the model. Okay, now moving to distributed tracing. 
for traces collection, we have decided to implement our own custom solution. However, uh, using uh, Spring libraries like Slow. And then for everything else, we have used FileBit, MetricBig, Elasticsearch, and Kibana. <coughs> As uh, we said, uh, as I said before, uh, we promote to use the right tool for the right job, so our technology stack is enforced. Uh, however, we strongly recommend and promote uh, Spring Boot 2, which has proven to be the, a very powerful platform to develop uh, microservices. Uh, regarding mobile, we tried both hybrid and native with uh, Ionic. And but we have settled with native because for the same effort, we got much better quality. Okay, when we designed the continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline, uh, we chose pretty standard stuff here. And however, we haven't been using Jenkins uh, just uh, to avoid another tool to manage. GitLab uh, is enough. Okay, now moving to the runtime environment, the cloud. Uh, our top directive here was to uh, avoid vendor locking by not binding to proprietary APIs. For example, we use Kafka in, instead of Kinesis and we used Cognito, but it was a, mi a mistake. And for everything else, we have uh, built our own platform on top of EC2 instances. <clears throat> From the beginning, it was clear we wanted to use Kubernetes for the runtime. Um, but uh, as we have been uh, evolving the, the environment, uh, it has become eventually the new operating system managing all runtime resources, configuration, secrets, uh, everything regarding to network, uh, scaling, availability, and, and so on. And, and it's working very well. Okay, what's for the future? So we all know there is an important lack of experienced developers. So to avoid that gap, and disparity between knowledge and, and capacity, we have to improve our modeling process, keeping pair programming and other techniques. API governance is becoming an issue because we are already having uh, different API versions. And we found ourselves having discussions about the uh, domain boundaries and bounded context and so on. So we are thinking of formally adopting domain-driven design. <coughs> And as I said before, uh, we are trying to unify our tooling to fix the gaps and overlaps, and we are trying Cucumber for everything. Everything end-to-end -end testing, ATDD for semantic validation, and consumer-driven contract testing uh, for syntactic validation. Okay, we keep unit testing and integration tests. Okay, another thing we want to achieve is to be able to bootstrap a full uh, bank platform anywhere. And in order to do that, we have to be uh, uh, ben fully vendor neutral, okay? And automate uh, everything, all infrastructure and configuration. But by far the greatest change is the natural evolution of the architecture towards uh, command query responsibility segregation and event sourcing. Okay, how does this work? Um, we have a split or vertical applications in two parts. One is the commander and query services, which are the ones, again, receiving uh, REST requests, which are now uh, split into commands and queries. Commands are uh, delegated and transformed to uh, events, uh, which are then consumed by uh, the other type of microservices, the adapters. These ones are the, the, the ones that uh, act on the domain and, and, uh, and change uh, the, the model. And then uh, state changes are published as events uh, 
uh, as fact events that are then consumed by any service uh, requiring the, the model uh, view. Okay, as you can see, uh, the adapter microservices are in fact an anti-corruption layer because they hide the external world from our business domain. Also, Kafka has become a central part of our architecture, uh, but uh, not to be confused with an enterprise service bus. We are already aware of that <laughs> danger. <laughs> okay, and that's all. If you find this project interesting, we have uh, a few more. Um, so we are always open for new collaborations, so contact us if, if, if you would like to. Thanks very much. Thank you.